Uh, is it radish? The. Yeah, that's a grinder. Nice. And then those stickers are yours. Feel free to leave them. Feel free to take them. Feel free to fucking burn them. Whatever. I'll take them. Whatever is clever, brother. And if Lou um, doesn't have one on the mirror, I'll definitely have to put one on it. That'd be dope. That'd that be dope. mirror in the room. That's my mirror. Yeah, you put a ton of stickers on it. Yeah. You put a fuck ton of stickers on it. I've been working on it since I was a kid, <clears throat> actually. And that's kind of your whole origin story into this equation. Like, you, the reason you're here right now is because, like, and I don't even mean right now, like, oh, bro, the reason you're here right now on the fucking podcast. No, like, you're at our house right now no, because yeah. you know Liv. Like, we met yeah. you through Liv. You guys met at a sticker shop. Yeah. That's cool. That's super cool. It was cool, yeah. And it's just, like, you guys have been kind of stuck together since. I mean, yeah. Like, the first moment we met, actually. Like, super just, like, chill the whole time. And this is, like, the year is, like, 2020 when that happens? I think either 2020 or 2019. Okay. And then after meeting live there you then moved to canada right i mean yeah not like right after like uh it was after covid so i mean we had pretty much gotten all fired before we before i even moved that's why it was such, such like a good situation for me is because like i was getting everyone was getting let go anyway so i just made the money and left tell us about the whole canadian can't worry, Canada situation. Because you moved to Canada to meet some woman? Yeah, so technically, I'll start here. Okay. Is, and then, like, I'll jump forward again. But my mom was born in Canada. So technically, I'm allowed to apply to be a citizen there. And I did. So now I have dual citizenship. So I can go back and forth, work in both countries, like all the all the fun benefits and stuff but i also have to pay taxes in both countries which sucks so then after i got that i always wanted to move to canada at least like for a bit to just see how it was and then i had a dream to move there for film school because there was a really good film school vfs which uh, vancouver film school which i wanted to go to and just like learn how to write basically just like the structures of film writing and like tv movies even games i think they do uh and i did end up going there but i did it online instead because of covid that's what i was saving all my money for so then after covid happened that's when i moved but i met this woman through gaming like a mobile game and it was literally just like this stupid um, IO game. What's IO mean? Like um, Apple shit. It's just like a really easy to follow mobile game, like uh, these blobs that eat each other and split. What's the game called again? Agario. Agario. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I was meeting to watch gameplay on that, but I literally, like, I forgot what the fucking name was. Yeah. It's then like, I forgot to text you. It's A G A R dot I O. It's Agar, the, just Agario. And I, I was really good at it, and that's how I got into the community, which, like, someone hit me up through Instagram after I happened to run into them in the game. There's no chatting or communication through the game, but you can write a name on your blob. So I basically just like asked them what their handle was and then we started talking and they invited me into the community and that's how I met her. How did she get your, like what was your, what was your blob's name and how did she know to take that name and apply it to Instagram and then direct message you from it? Was it wasn't her who did it. It was actually an, this guy who like I knew of him already and it was crazy that we ran into each other, but we had the same name in the game. Like we used the same handle every time. So that's kind of what intrigued him to like invite me in too. 
is that like we're the same name we both play very well and then he just invited me to a bunch of groups just full of people and she happened to be in one of them and I noticed her immediately because she um just the way she acted she never talked in the calls ever very like reserved and like mysterious Kinda so I like think you. that's yeah I think that's what drew me into her so then we just like started talking all the time I'm so confused so the person <clears throat> who invited you into the group yes he dm'd you on instagram yeah how did he find your instagram I wrote it on my blog. Okay. Because so we were talking back and forth through our blog names. That's how we communicated through it. Because there's no chat or any way to communicate through it other than the names. So, like, you can ask and, like, talk through that kind of. It's a real pain in the ass because the only way to change it is after you die. So then you can come back into the game with a new name. So you were... <laughs> Your blob's name was just Bryce Mitchell? Or wait. Middleton. Middleton, sorry. Sorry, no, no, sorry, it's all good. sorry. <laughs> it's, no, no. Sorry, okay, was... the reason I said Bryce Mitchell is because some shit that has to do with the, the, the do you know what UFC is? Yeah, Ultimate Fighting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy in it named Bryce Mitchell. Oh, And he, like, yeah. just fought, and, like, your name's fucking Bryce Middleton, so, yeah. like, that was just, like, a brain deterioration moment two bryce m's i get it but my bad bro my that's bad. all good so it was bryce middleton on no no it was ape so i used apex that was the handle i used and his name in the game was also apex okay. so we're both named apex we're both <laughs> playing together he notices me starts asking me like um like basically like who i am and like my handle I thought you couldn't chat. Through the names. So he would die and then type something out and then and come, come back. back in. The only way you I could recognize him is the skin he used. There's different skins you can have on your blobs. So that's how you recognize each other is the skin you use. And the thing is, a couple minutes ago, I almost said that. I was like how like you said you can't chat and shit and then what ran through my mind i was like is he changing his username over and over again yes. and then i was like dude that'd be such a stupid question no one would ever do that it's such a pain but, in the ass but we that's how we did it yeah damn so you're how many characters per uh username can you have like oh, 16 man. or something yeah honestly you're saying a it's couple not that words high because um what ends up happening some people found a way to like get around it by like making letters in, in like sites with multiple letters within it got it so their names would be gigantic and it would lag the entire server Oof. and that's why they hated having long characters and names and stuff so they limited it to like 16 or something maybe 20 damn okay and then you got invited to this community yeah of- it's online Like, what website? No, no, no. Um, It's an app called Line. It's like Kick, basically. It's called Line. It's called Line. Interesting. Some people use it for work, for just, like, chatting with friends. Um, But, yeah, it's, uh, like, everyone is either on Line or Discord. Either one. I never got on Discord, but I was always on Line. So, no pun intended, yeah, no pun you're, intended. There's two things going on. Like you're you are online playing with these other users across yeah. the globe, but you're literally also on an app called Line. You're yes. online. Yeah. Damn bro, you're full of tricks tonight, dude. You are full of tricks. It was a wild experience. Like it's a weird situation to just like get into and then like finding someone to move across the country for. How did you go from seeing her in the chat room thing to living with her in another country? That's a good question. (laughs) Um, Basically, like, like any relationship, honestly, it just, like, grew slowly and, like, steadily where, like, we'd reach new things. But it's, it's essentially just a long distance relationship. So... I 
obviously she's in Canada and she's like three hours ahead of ahead of me. So like we'd say good night back and forth. Like that was that was the thing we did. We'd say good morning, good night. And then like sometimes we'd talk and if we were too busy we wouldn't talk, but we'd always say like good morning, good night. And then slowly we'd just like talk about like seeing each other, but we're so far away that like how would we do this or like go about this? So I got my passport and we planned a trip for me to go see her in Canada because I always wanted to go. So I went there and I got an Airbnb and just like chilled in under someone's like basement basically. I was just in their basement. And um, I slept like a whole, like the first whole day she wasn't there, I was just like chilling. And then the next day she came over to see me and like visit me. And I got to meet her parents and everything. And her parents are so, were like so relaxed with everything like going on. It kind of like freaked me out since like mine are super like, where are you all the time? But her parents were super relaxed. Yeah, like totally, like just completely. Like, uh... They just wanted to meet me and then they were like, good. That was it. They just like wanted to know my name and see me. And then they were like, all right, go have fun. Like no questions. What a 21st century love story. I know. Like, you, like her parents, like, she told, did she tell her parents, hey, this guy named Bryce is coming from the United States? Our parents talked on the phone to each other <laughs> before I went there. How awkward. I know. I left the room. I could, I didn't want to know what they were talking about. I Damn. just left the room. I'm sure it was awkward for them even. Like, how do you even, like, what do you even say to each other? I just wouldn't want to do that because you're not, you're like well over 18. You're like a 21 year old grown man. I mean, now I am, but then I wasn't. Oh, you're like 19 or something. 18, 19. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I just wouldn't want anyone having that conversation for me. You know? Well, it was more like, of, like, they wanted way? to know each other. They weren't, okay. like, talking about us seeing each other. It was more of just, like, they wanted to know who they were, like, just stuff like that. Just simple information about each other. Because, I mean, I'm going to a whole other country. My mom doesn't want me to get, like, something bad to happen to me. Abducted or something. Yeah. Like, kidnapped. I don't know. So, even earlier you were talking about the relationship kind of started with you saying good morning or good night. Mm-hmm. There's like, there was a couple steps leading up to that though. Cause you, you want to know all the like, yeah, process. like you okay, can't I can, just, you I can't just it. say good night to someone and then they have them say good morning to the next day. I like will a tell you person. that like that, that did kind of happen where like, one day we just started saying it all the time like it wasn't a spoken thing it was more of just like it happened and then that became our thing and then it was like slowly that's how we got closer but also we originally started playing together we played really well together as well because you can play in teams kind of where it's called like split running but you split and then someone your teammate will eat the ones you need, because you can only split into 16, so many, so you'll max out and not be able to go anywhere. It's a whole, like, thing, but we worked really well together in the game, and eventually, like, we started talking to each other, but we could only text, because she doesn't like talking. Like, she wouldn't chat in calls, she never said a word any time. No one knows what she looked like, anything. So it was kind of just like a mystery and I... Did you know what she looked like? No, I was just drawn to like solve it basically. So I went in... Well, just like to find out all the stuff about her. How do you know she was even a girl? Um, It was kind of obvious because like all the girls would talk together in like groups and they had like separate groups for just like girl chats and stuff like that. And I think some, some one, the person who owned the group like uh, the person who had created this group knew who she was and like had seen her. Um, so I knew, like it was kind of like known that she was a girl. And then I did end up uh, like hearing her talk 
and it just went from there kind of like slowly she talked to me I got to see how she looked like just all the stuff like that it was kind of crazy I didn't expect it not everyone can say what you did like you kind of lived a crazy experience you know and I'm hoping there's like more to come and you're kind of yeah I mean yeah (laughs) yeah no this isn't the end like you're at the beginning of this stuff pretty much yeah that's just the beginning that's how it started and then how did it go from like being kind of chat friends playing with each other on the app to hey we should move in with each other like fuck all like that took so long honestly how long? it took like two three years almost oh so you met her back in like 2016 we'd known each other for a long time yeah okay damn how long were you playing this game an iphone game right we yeah we knew each other for like five years to, in total um but in like the second year we started like really talking and stuff like that getting to know each other what year did you move in with each other of the five years you've known each other last year in july i think or june i went there in june with all my stuff and then in july we moved in july 10th of 2021 yeah okay and then how long were you there for uh six months six months okay yeah so you got back in january yeah this year 2022 yeah new year what made you move out um honestly okay there's always been one problem in like our relationship and it's not that crazy of a problem Mm -hmm. it's literally just miscommunication there's always it was always like some form of miscommunication that would mess us up and like we'd get into fights over just like the dumbest things because we didn't know some piece of information that someone else knew and if we had just like talked about it it would have been nothing like uh you sh- like she assumed or like you assumed that uh, you called like a delivery service for like pizza or something and you like toppings were on the pizza that one person didn't like. Yeah, so just like stuff like that. Small stuff. Very small, small stuff. stuff. Why were you guys just communicating? Or that's just not in your personality? Honestly, maybe it wasn't. Just uh, she's very shy too so like that might have been it <laughs> and you're like, you're really reserved right most of the time <clears throat> i like to just like hold on to information unless it's needed that's funny that's funny who who do you think was more um who do you think could have done better at communicating me you for her? sure you um like, I assumed a lot of things. Like, sometimes I would just assume a lot of things. I mean, it was definitely both of us. She she would definitely just, like, leave something out or, like, think of it and just not say it. And I'm like, I can't read your mind, so I don't know what you're thinking about. And if you don't tell me, I'm not going to figure it out. It was just things that I knew I couldn't figure out ever. And it would just cause us to have, like, crazy fights. Not, like, crazy, but, like, we wouldn't talk to each other. That's how we would fight, is that we would not have any communication. So it would be miscommunication, no communication. And then eventually I'd be like, what's up? Like, what's going on? You would pull up on her, like, in every the time, living room? You'd every like, time I'd up? be like, hey, like, this is dumb. Like, what is it? Just talk to me. And then we talk it out. Okay. But what's worse about it is that that didn't used to happen before because whenever we would have a problem, we'd immediately, like, no matter what we were doing the next day, we would talk about it until we were done. 
like until we solved it immediately we would we, we wouldn't wait we just talk it out immediately and then that that would fix it when you guys were behind the screens or yeah. in person behind the screens and so she was a lot more open because it's like like there's no there's no confrontation when it's just you and your phone like yeah. you just you pour in your own emotion and your own desire and it just that message gets received by the person on the other end so they're able to just say whatever the fuck they want honestly it's more comforting to not see the person right in front of you because yeah. you can see how what you say affects them so you can say the wildest stuff and um fix it right there and then but to like seeing someone get hurt by what you say it's it just like kind of you hold on to it more than if you just like text it it's just out of your mind immediately are you guys still together or are you guys broken up we're broken up okay what was the straw that broke the camel's back? More of just I was unhappy. Okay. And like... That's why you came back to America. Yeah. I mean, I love Montreal and I like think about it all the time. It's a really fun city to just like go on walks in. Really? I literally used to just walk Montreal all the time. I'd just walk around in our neighborhood. There was like a McDonald's that I would always walk to that was like 30 minutes, 20 minutes away. 30 minutes away? Yeah, it was just, like, fun to walk. <laughs> it was more, like, 20, 25. Okay. But, like, it was fun to walk to because I would just go. I would get high, just walk. And it was a good time always. Damn, dude. It's so inspiring. Like, I want to start walking. The Literally. Weeknd has a really good song called Sidewalks. And he's talking about how Sidewalks saved his life. And I cars. I really like that song because I've literally just like walked the streets of Montreal, the sidewalks, and they're so nice. What's the difference between walking the streets of Montreal and like slow? I think for me, and it might just be for me, but I think it's because when I walked in Montreal, it's places I've never been to before. I've never seen... I, even though sometimes I would do the same routes, most of the time I would just like choose a new place to go. I'd be like, I've walked this way, let's walk the other way. And sometimes I would go with um, the person I moved in with. And we would just literally walk around our neighborhood and go different directions. We'd sometimes be gone for like hours, just going on walks. <clears throat> Learning new areas. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, it was always a good time. Were the people dope in Canada? They were dope. There was a lot of good people in Canada that I met. Honestly, I am probably going to go back next year to go uh, work at the place I was working before. Just not where would you be living? I'd probably try and find the same place. Just not with her in it? We'll see. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe something miraculous will happen. So, are you still talking to her? Um, yeah, okay. but not. It's super rare that like we talk to each other. Obviously, because <clears> she's <throat> like, even though she's probably upset with me, she just like can't talk to me. Really, it's just like very difficult. Are you? But and you're still kind of stuck paying your your rent over there not anymore uh may 1st actually is the last so like we have to pay for april and then okay. it's over it's done do you have belongings over there yes i am going to get them very soon okay is Liv going with you yeah really yeah so you guys are driving no, flying. Damn, you guys are making me hella jealous. You can come. <laughs> you can also come, yeah. Dude, if I didn't have work, I would be down. I'd be super down. <laughs> you guys are going to be gone for like a week, two weeks? I think I can only go for like three days just because it it's, we have to be out by like the 30th, basically. Like, what's over there? Your bed? Uh, clothes. no, clothes, my computer, my Xbox is over there, but my cousins gave me one so I could play with them here. They just have, like, an extra one. What games? 
you play right now? Uh, they wanted me to play Apex Legends with them, so I've just been playing that. And they always get upset about how bad I am at the game, but I'm like, I literally have no time to play this game ever, and when I do, obviously I can't learn it fast enough to play with you guys. But they're nice. Like, um, we do have fun together most nights. So you're you're done paying rents in after April is over. Yeah. Then after you're this go. month, basically. And then, is she gonna be there when you're grabbing all your stuff? Yeah, she wants to talk to me actually. So we're probably gonna. Something's going to happen. I don't know what, but it'll either be good and we'll make up or it'll be bad. And you're talking about you're like next year, I might be moving back to the same place with her. And I'm like, not, wait, w- not with her. There, I would not move back with her. Okay. But you might be moving to the same, like, were you guys in a house or apartment? Apartment. I'm. Let me rephrase though. I would move back and then like say hi to her. Like I would not move in with her, and like stay with her, just because it would be too awkward. But um, I do like where we were. Apparently, it was a bad neighborhood. But like even in Canada, the bad neighborhoods are not that bad. There's like people smoke weed there. That's. And, like, sometimes it's kind of sketchy and there's loud people that just, like, wander around. But other than that, it's pretty fun. And, like, you're super central, so you can go anywhere in Montreal super easily. By car, bike. Like, I used to bike everywhere. We didn't have a car. I biked to work. It was a good workout, too. There was a huge hill over by my work. What do you see? What do you see like your breath in the morning? No, because thankfully it started at like 10 or 11. PM? AM. AM, AM. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I didn't have to get up where I get up now at like 640, but there I'd get up at like, I think I just needed to be out of the door with 30 minutes of time to ride. Because it technically took, like, 26, but still, if I was feeling tired, then I'd need more time. What were you doing for work there? I started... There's a lot of drama in this, actually. I started as a maintenance worker in a tennis place. Oh, wow. It was called Hillside Tennis Club. And it was probably the most perfect job for me I could get because everyone there spoke English really well, like first language. And all the clients that went there were basically just like from the U.S. So they all spoke English very well. And some of them, I doubt, even spoke French, to be honest, even though we're in Quebec. So when I went there... I met the manager. He's kind of strange, but he's he was cool. So he gave me my uniform and everything, and I did that job for like like a solid few weeks. And then I started talking to the chef that was there. There was only one chef, and she had an assistant who did like salads while she ran the like lunch station. So he did like salads and stuff to help her. And she did all like the main stuff and the dinners. And if we really needed help, we'd call in like another chef or the general manager. He was like the top chef in Montreal, like not the top chef, but he worked in the top restaurant in Montreal, and he's really good at his job. Um, so I was under some good good chefs, but I still worked in maintenance, and slowly I crept over to uh, where the chef was because 
Literally tiptoeing is your style. Literally yeah. tiptoeing. Bro, what's going on? <laughs> so basically, we had part of our job was to wash dishes to help. So I was in the kitchen at least for a little bit. Uh oh. So I got to talk to the chef often, and I would try my best to hang out in the dishes for as long as possible. Even though it's not desirable, it wasn't terrible because I could talk to her. She'd make us food, like that was part of the job. As we'd get, we'd get to eat there on the job, and the food was amazing because it's all for like rich country club people. So we're just getting some bomb food. Like shit you've never tasted before. Pretty much, like amazing salads, like that. We got some like bomb salads, some amazing like pasta dishes well for me because i'm like vegetarian so but she knew very well how to make vegetarian food and she's like of course i've made like tons of stuff so she just would throw anything together it'd be a the best thing you'd ever had it she was just good like that so of course naturally i was like i want to learn like please teach me and what i wanted to say to her when i got the confidence finally because I was very nervous about asking her since she already had an assistant. I was like, well, I won't be her assistant. So I just wanted to ask her if like, hey, can I shadow you like after work? Because we got off around like maybe three. And I was like, hey, can I just like after work shadow you for like dinners or like lunch, whatever, I don't care. Like I'll come in off the clock and just like see what you do. Because I wanted to learn. And before I could even say anything, she asked me if I wanted to learn how to cook, like, under her. And I was like, 100% yes. I was literally just about to ask you if I could shadow you. And she's like, let me talk to the general manager, and I'll see what I can do. But she really wanted to work with me. And from there, her assistant was out often like out sick because one he had like mental health stuff going on but also he would like go out drinking a lot so he'd get like wasted and then not be able to come into work but also he was really like depressed and he would say like the craziest shit all the time he would basically be like like he would reference killing himself so nonchalantly that it was super concerning like when we had dinner together after like a really good service peep he would like make a joke about it and everyone would be just like nervous laughing (laughs) like they no one knew what to say to this guy so eventually um his doctor pulled him out of work and told him he can't do anything he needs to like go into like treatment immediately basically so he was out of work for like a month And that's when the chef had asked me to, like, step in and, like, be her assistant and just, like, learn how to do everything that she did. And I did. How old was the woman? Uh, I don't know. I want to say, like, 40s. But I bet she, she would probably say I was flattering her. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But she didn't seem that old at all. (laughs) Okay, and yeah, keep going. So I'm intrigued. Yeah, this is crazy. So this is so fucking crazy, bro. A lot of the servers were just like super off put by the fact that I straight up just took this guy's job because he had to go on a mental health break. And I think the head chef kind of figured that out because she was like, hey, you know, like, he used to say stuff like, oh, I'm feeling really, like, down today and, like, I can't come in. But she knew that. And then he would, like, reference how he was having, like, a crazy night drinking last night. And she was like, I feel bad for him. But, like, how can I feel bad for him when he's just, like, out partying all night? I can't really like do anything to help him. So she was kind of frustrated with him for the most part. And I was like, okay, I mean, 
if she was frustrated with him already, I don't feel as bad stepping in and like helping her with what she's doing because she's the only one on the line like most of the time. And we have like 60 guests often just like coming in for lunch, just ordering the most annoying things possible. Like the worst thing to get, I'm sure there's a lot, but one of them that I hated was sandwiches they would want cut that we specifically don't offer cut because it would like mess up a sandwich. Like in, in Avila where I work now, people want the their pulled pork sandwiches cut in half and it's like, it'll literally all just like squish out the side the moment I try to cut it. And I'd still do it, but I'm like, people should not order it like that. It, it really doesn't help them. Or just fucking do it yourself. Honestly. Lazy motherfuckers. <laughs> bro, yeah. people have gotten so fucking lazy, bro. Honestly. It's crazy. People are just like... Didn't work. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's some crazy shit happening where people's requests for things. It's like, dude, like... Do you, like... Do you have, like, friends, and do they, like, invite you to their house, and you, like, I don't know, like, there's a point where you just gotta, like, suck it up, and if you're gonna go out for a bite to eat, you just kind of have to deal with what's given to you. I don't know. It's, like, take a step back and, like, just go, okay, like, at least I'm getting something. At least I'm fucking getting something. You know? I don't know. People get wild. People get crazy. Honestly. But, um... You should ask Bryce how him and I met. The sticker shop? Oh, we already talked about that. Oh, you did? You mentioned it? I I know what you want. I know what you (laughs) want me to talk about, and I will. I will give you a quick story about how me and Liv met. It honestly took a long time to build our trust back from what happened. This is day one of meeting her. I met her, said hello. Then, like, deep into the day, I'm like, oh, I should probably go, like, say hello to this person because I wanted to be more social. And I was like, this is a great place to start. I'll say hi to the new person working. I did. And I was, like, going to play a little joke on her where I high-five her. But then I, like, uh too slow and like just say just kidding and I did it was like one of my first days working and it immediately she would not high five me ever again and she's like I don't trust you anymore you need to build back the trust this is day one of meeting her and I've already ruined the like trusting relationship that we had that didn't exist so now I'm like okay great I have to do all this stuff to get our friendship back what do I do and from there, every day, I tried to give her a high five or like some form and like sneak it in there. She wouldn't until one day, finally. And like now we have a handshake and stuff that we do all the time. But that was the craziest, ex- like meeting someone and then immediately losing their trust has never happened to me before. And it was really stressful. And I don't know why it was so stressful because I didn't have any attachment to live at all at the time. But that was how we met. It's funny because Liv is such a person you can, like, do that to. But there's, like, other people where they, like, don't appreciate, like, a small little joke type thing. Like, Liv kept going along with it. Well, my joke was that I'm going to tease him back and be pissed about it. Like, I was playing his game back at him. But people don't do that anymore. No. No one does that. And I always like, knew I wanted to be his friend. Like, I yeah, wasn't trying to give him shit. I yeah. was trying to be like, I'm going to tease you back and we're going to become friends. Yeah, I was really so, so dope, dude. So dope. Yeah, I, the thing is, I'm like, I'm not surrounded by that right now. I'm glad I'm you, I'm really I'm not surrounded so by that. I'm so fucking glad you met Bryce. Really? Yeah. And I'm really glad Bryce met you. Dude. Yeah, that's why I was like, dude, I want to, I want to get Bryce on the podcast if he's down. I mean, come yeah. by for a second, say what's good, tell a couple of stories. I'm intrigued, bro. You're a good storyteller. You're all like nice and quiet in the corner, and like, 
his voice is just like it's calming yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um okay so back to working with this head chef she starts teaching you all this stuff she teaches me all this amazing stuff she's literally like the nicest person i've ever met working i'm sorry lou but like she <laughs> <laughs> she taught me so many things and a lot of people in the like in any industry, I think they will keep certain tricks and like info to themselves so that they can stay ahead of you even, just so that they don't give all their secrets away, which is like kind of a shitty thing to do because like you'd think you'd want to give someone everything so that they can like continue with their career and like journey. But some people just are like that and they will keep the information from you and you have to go to other people to learn it. But she literally gave me everything. Everything that she learned, she would, if I was doing something, she'd be like, hey, here's a really like easy tip to do this. And I'd be like, oh great, I'll do that forever now because it's faster or like looks nicer. And she gave me a, she gave me a literal textbook that they give you in school if you go to culinary school. She gave me the textbook that she had that was better in her opinion. She was like, this book, in my opinion, is better because it gives you the history of all the French cuisine where they took most of it out in the new version. So you don't learn it as much. Like, you don't learn about a lot of stuff in this book. And I got to learn about, like, um, Creme. That dude was crazy. He had to have everything perfect. That's why they say creme de la creme, like top, top notch, basically the best. It has to be perfect. Because it's named after there's someone. A yeah. I didn't even fucking know that. And uh, the guy who invented the kitchen brigades, like basically the whole kitchen system we see now is because, oh God, I don't remember his name. It's so embarrassing. But like he invented the whole kitchen brigade system. Those br- kitchen brigades. So there. it's called the kitchen brigade. Um, so you got your guy on sautéing things. Like he's literally just that's his station. He's sautéing things. It was basically to make everything way more efficient because you had a bunch of line cooks just like running around doing stuff. And he was like, no, let's have everyone do specific things and then come together. So you had like people sautéing. Yeah. In and out, you're... You're only going like this with potatoes and deep hey. frying fries, and that is your one job. And rice and I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all have been flaunting that in my. We have to Next take time you. We go, we're, we're getting it for you, whether you're with us or not. Yeah, for sure. What would Make you sure like? Not at work. Hey, what do you like? Dude, fucking anything, bro. But like, I'm we, not picky. But like, you like a? Do you like a regular cheeseburger? Do you like a double double? Do you like it animal style? Like what everything you, like? you just said, I like. Fair okay. Enough. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, I mean. The honest truth is, most of the time you're at work. Just make like, sure I'm not at. That's the thing. In and out is bad cold. So like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Save your yeah. yeah. Don't save your time. Yeah. If I'm at work. The next time we're going, we're bringing. You. Yeah, I will. I the last time I don't think I was at work or something. You were, but you had just gotten off, and I thought about it, and I literally we were in the parking lot, and I told Bryce, "Holy fuck, I should have gotten something for a laser." And then I was like, <laughs> "I don't even know what he likes from here." Yeah, and that's the thing. When it comes like in and out and shit, like it's all the same. Like it's just I like agree. good it's food. Really like yeah. send it yeah. my way, you know. We're coming your way for sure soon with it. But I doubt it. But you should not with us. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What time is it? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm down. Honestly, maybe like this coming because we're about to jump on the weekend right now. Maybe like next Let's week. Let's go before your birthday. Down, yeah, dude. Yeah, down. Or maybe on my birthday. Yeah, on your birthday. That'd be fun. Friday, so That'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, okay, so last she, couple questions for you. Okay. You're currently back in Cali. You're in Slow. Mm-hmm. You're working. You said you're working in Avila? I work in Avila and Apple Farm. Oh, that's right. You're doing the uh, Valley Barn thing and then also Apple Farm. Yeah. And you're kind of like a cook at Apple Farm? Yeah, at Apple Farm, I work on the line. I also work in prep sometimes. Like uh, today, I was just in prep, which is good because you get to learn. You prepare the food 
either to be cooked or to just like go out and be warmed up. And then on the line, I cook it or just like warm it up like that. So I get to see both sides of it. You can cook. Tell us some of the things that you cook. Honestly, I'm just on like the easiest breakfast station area. So it's just pancakes, French toast, stuffed French toast. Uh, we have apple fritter pancakes, which are really good. Uh, we have hash browns. Apparently, I'm the best at making hash browns. Um, sometimes I help make sandwiches during lunch because like no one orders breakfast after one. Usually, we did get like one order, but. That was a while ago. Most people don't order breakfast around like one or two. So I just help my coworkers, like whoever's on the other station, which is basically the rest of the menu that's not breakfast. Um, I just try to help them out as much as possible because they're always like slammed with orders and I'm just sitting over there like, do you need anything? What time do you guys open and close? So we open... I don't know what time we open, honestly, because I get there at 7, and then sometimes people sit down to eat or are already eating. And then other times I get in and it's just nobody. Like, nobody's there. And then people, like, start sitting down around, like, 7.30. So you can go get breakfast there at 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 8 a.m.? Yeah, pretty much. Damn, okay. So I'd say seven thirty to be safe. That's a breakfast place then. Yeah, for Slo, sure. That people go to. It goes from seven thirty to two. PM and I then you guys say. close. Yeah. And then we have dinners now on Friday, Saturday. So you guys are like reopen yeah. or something? We basically don't close on Friday. Like tomorrow we don't close at all. So we have lunch throughout the whole day and then at I think five or four no, it's three. Three is when, like, dinner kind of opens. You can order dinner stuff. Just gives us, like, an hour from two to three to, like, kind of set up all the dinner stuff and prepare it that we need for the day. And then we can start giving it to people at three. Are you only doing uh, breakfast right now? I, yeah, I try my best to look at the other stations when I'm not busy so I can watch them make it so I know how to make it. And then sometimes I practice when we're like completely dead. I practice how to make things. I think today I was practicing like poached eggs just because I've seen them made. I've tried to make one. It came out pretty good. So all the egg stuff is kind of a lot harder than you'd think. Like, over easy. If one breaks, you throw the whole thing away. Over easy. That's, That's the one where it's... Runny still. Like, the whole yolk's runny. Okay. Is that the one where you crack it, just on the fucking grill, and it just starts cooking? That's sunny side. Are they kind of the same thing? They're pretty much the same thing, except one you don't flip. Sunny side, you leave how it is. Yeah, you just Over leave it there. easy, you flip it. Yeah. Okay. Scrambled is my favorite, for sure. Scrambled's pretty good. But even scrambled has its own, like, you can have a little runniness in your scramble, or you could have it, like, completely cooked to the point where it's, like, almost burnt. It's kind of hard making scrambled eggs. Like, I've honestly, I've never made good scrambled eggs. Do you want to know how? Yeah. I know, okay, this is what I know, or, like, I've seen in videos, because I think I watched one once when they made it, and it looks like the the restaurant quality. They never let the egg settle. They were constantly whipping it the entire time until it was fully cooked, fully scrambled, and when they took it off, it wasn't overcooked, it wasn't dry, it still had that runniness, like, wet, moist, juicy bites to it. It wasn't, like... Because I always, like, dry it completely out and it's like it doesn't even it doesn't look like a restaurant style scrambled egg so if you really want like super good or like restaurant quality i'll say like scrambled eggs you just get a nonstick pan 
uh, one of those spatulas, the rubber ones that like bakers use to s- scrape things off the side. Get one that's like safe to use in pans because there's some that will just melt if you try to use it. Nobody wants that. You crack a bunch of eggs to make your like mix. Basically, it's just eggs, but you mix them really well together. You can use like a blender. We use an emulsion blender. So it's just like the long thing with the blade on the bottom. Just mixes all the eggs together. While they're on the grill or in a No, no. This is just like the mix that you will use like in the pan. Got it. And then you just wait till they're all like the yellowish color. There's no traces of like egg white or like a yolk that's not mixed in. Everything's mixed. You just put it in with a little bit of butter in the pan first like melted butter, pour the butter in, put it in there, and you're constantly, you could have it at any heat, honestly. The higher the heat, the faster it cooks. And you just continuously get, as it cooks, push it inward, push it around, until the whole thing is basically almost cooked. You literally just push it around and make sure it doesn't stay where it is, otherwise it'll burn. If it stays where it is, it burns, so you just move it all around constantly, just like you were saying, don't let it settle. Continuously move it until it's almost, you can see a little bit of runny, but you basically have your eggs. You can even like chop them up in the pan with your little spatula or like shake the eggs around with your pan if you're like good at flipping and stuff like that. And once it's done, you, you can turn it off as it's like a little bit runny and just shake it around the pan. It'll finish cooking, take it off the plate, or put it onto a plate, eat it, it's amazing. Like the best eggs I've had. Hey, so bro, well, I'm down to end there. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Anything you wanna say to the camera, anybody potentially listening? Um, What a good story, dude. Thank you. What also, a fun... he did a great job, and he should make you breakfast burritos or yeah. something sometime soon. Anything you want, like if whatever they breakfast be, they, they you want. They might be vegetarian, but also he's down to cook meat. So. I can oh, cook meat. Oh no, dude! Too. Yeah, give me some vegetarian shit. But him and I eat vegetarian. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put me what you're on. It's good. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt your shoutouts. <laughs> uh, shout out my family. How about that? I love you guys. Aww. Aww. Dude, it's been real, dude. For real. Thank you. Honestly. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been a fun one, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah, like uh, anytime.